Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. It's a good thing that God sees the heart, because that's not what we see very well. We tend to judge another person by the book cover we see, but God sees deeper, and that's a good thing. If you look at the people God called throughout the Bible, you might wonder at this ragtag group. Just some examples. You've got Moses, an on-the-run fugitive murderer who tries everything he can to think, he tries everything he can think of to get out of doing what God wants him to do. Or how about Gideon? who is supposed to lead the armies of Israel against the Midianites. And when God calls him, he's so afraid of those same Midianites that he's threshing his grain in his wine press in order to hide from them. And of course you have David, an adulterer and murderer, and the disciples who ranged from fishermen to tax collectors without much outward redeeming qualities for any of them. It's like that over and over in the Bible. And then there's Amos. This week we are looking at how God called some of the Old Testament prophets to speak God's word. And today we want to focus on Amos. Isaiah had a nice vision of God and an eager offer to be the agent of God. Jeremiah didn't like being God's prophet at all, but couldn't seem to help himself from doing it. And Ezekiel tells us in three chapters of an odd vision expressing over and over the glory of God and how God impelled him to speak. But when it comes to Amos, all we get for his call story is two little verses. In Amos 7, Amos is telling a number of visions he has had that speak of the destruction of Israel because of their unfaithfulness. Finally, the priest of the town, a man named Amaziah, tells Amos to go away. In fact, he tells him to go to his own country and preach there if he has to preach, but to leave them alone. As it says in Amos 7, Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. And that's it for Amos' call story. But in those two small verses, we learn a lot. First, this comes in a time when God's people had been split into two nations, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And if the truth is known, the people of the two nations really didn't like each other much. It was kind of like the North and the South in the Civil War here in our country. And what we learn was that Amos was from Tekoa, a town in Judah, but God told him to go preach in Bethel, which was in the northern nation of Israel. So this was something like a carpetbagger situation. Amos probably didn't really want to go, And they probably really didn't want this foreigner coming along and telling them how they were wrong. It wasn't well received. That's why Amaziah tells him to go back to his own country to preach. And Amos' answer has some more interesting information, too. I'm not a professional preacher, he says. I'm just a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. What that means is that Amos made his living by tending sheep and pruning trees. Not someone you would expect to be a preacher. And maybe that's the point. Amos was a regular person with no professional training, and yet that's whom God chose to speak God's word. And maybe, just maybe, God might choose us at times and places to speak God's word too. We probably don't expect it, that God would work through us, but God does. And maybe sometimes we don't want to go where God calls us, but we still need to go. After you all, 
you never know whom God might choose. It might even be us. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.